Is there life after death? Atheists, theists, and everyone in between debate the possibility, but there are some who claim to have experienced the afterlife firsthand. These people have gone to the other side, often bringing back with them stories of hope. Here are 10 people who went to hell and came back. Number 10 is Matthew Botsford. One day in March of 1992, Matthew Botsford was wounded after inadvertently taking a wound in a battle. Dropping to the ground, he felt excruciating pain in his head. After this, the world faded away to blackness. But Matthew continued to experience a nightmarish trip into the afterworld. The darkness enveloped him like black ink, pouring over his face. Suddenly, he felt the searing heat of hell beneath him. Looking down, he realized that he was hanging over an abyss. Then, he watched in horror as a demonic creature with glowing eyes climbed up the abyss towards him to drag him down. It was at that moment an angelic presence intervened and pulled him to safety, telling him that it was not his time. Once back in the world of the living, Matthew made it his mission to tell everyone about the reality of hell and the demons it contains. Number 9 is Howard Storm. Howard Storm was an art professor who found himself face to face with the devil's minions. In his book, My Descent into Death, he describes how he was an atheist up until his terrifying experience. He suffered a stomach perforation in 1985 and passed away. He then left his body and found himself walking through the hospital doors. There, he encountered several kind spirits which encouraged him to leave the hospital environment away from the world of the living. They led him into a thick fog with pleasant words, but once inside the fog, they revealed themselves as demonic creatures. They began to claw at him and pull at his soul. When Howard started praying, he felt a presence come and save him from a fate worse than death. Ever since then, Howard Storm has been a devout believer that something comes for you after death. Number 8 is George Ritchie. Dr. George Ritchie was an esteemed psychiatrist at the Department of Psychiatry for the Northeast Alabama Regional Medical Center. But it was an experience long before this as a 20-year-old which brought him into a malevolent spirit world filled with unspeakable nightmares. In 1966, after being pronounced passed twice by his doctors at an army hospital, there were very few who thought that he would come back a third time. But he did, and when he returned, he brought with him frightening tales of a world unseen. George believed that he had been guided by a spirit entity, which he identified as Jesus Christ, which took him through the various spiritual dimensions and locations which exist in the ether. At one point, he was shown the horrid, tormented souls forever bound in hell by their prejudice and ignorance, an experience which still frightens him to this day. Number 7 is Melon Thomas Benedict. Following a diagnosis of terminal brain cancer in 1982, Melon Thomas Benedict passed and remained in that state for more than an hour and a half. During this period, he did not lose consciousness and instead had a dark spiritual awakening. His soul was immersed in the dimensions of those who have passed, where he fell into what he described as a black hole of suffering. This place he knew to be hell because millions of other souls were there around him grieving and suffering, begging to return back to earth. The entire place was filled with anger and rage, and these emotions flowed through Benedict as he scrambled with his remaining strength to hold to a sense of identity. Finally, an eerie light descended and Benedict followed it until he was back in the hospital, with his brain cancer having miraculously gone into remission. Number 6 is Angie Fenimore. 
Hell is usually depicted as a place of flames and searing heat, populated by beings made of the same burning matter. When Angie Fenimore passed and was pulled towards Hell, however, her experience was quite different. She described Hell as a place where a person's life is reviewed. She re-experienced her entire existence through the eyes of those around her, before being banished to a bleak and empty field. Slowly, Angie realized that the field was the home of lost souls. Strange ghostly figures wandered the blank landscape. They were cursed and none of them could speak to each other. Angie knew that this was true hell and a place of utter loneliness. She then returned back to life and was thankful that she did not have to spend any more time walking with the damned. Number 5 is Alon Anava. Alan Anava was not a good person. He was selfish and mean to those around him. These deeds were carried momentarily into the afterlife when he had a near-death experience. He was confronted by demonic angels which stood in rows, holding papers in their hands, lists of every bad thing that they had ever done. Then he was suddenly surrounded by hundreds of people. It was every person that he had ever stolen from or harmed in his lifetime. Each person confronted him over what he had done. The angelic demons then took Alon to see the diseased parts of his soul which had been blackened every time he had done something wrong. To Alon, this truly was hell. When he returned from his judgment, he dedicated himself to helping others, though the memory of that place still haunts him, as he is unsure if he can ever wipe away the stains of his misdeeds. Number 4 is Ian McCormick. In 1980, Ian McCormick traveled overseas from his home in New Zealand to expand his horizons. What he didn't expect was for those experiences to include a trip to hell and back. While swimming off the island of Meritus, Ian was stung by a deadly jellyfish known as a sea wasp. He was paralyzed in the water for a time, and though he was pulled onto the boat by a local fisherman, he could feel that he was passing. Declared gone at the hospital, he found himself surrounded by darkness, but within that darkness he could feel something staring at him. A frozen cold then approached him, as though evil itself was surrounding him. Other souls were there in the darkness, tormented by this evil. They screamed at Ian that he deserved to be where he was, and then suddenly he woke up on a morgue slab in the hospital. Number 3 is Dr. Rajiv Parti. As an anesthesiologist, Dr. Rajiv Parti was aware of the strange experiences claimed by those who have come back from the other side. However, on Christmas Eve of 2010, he would learn what just such a journey was like firsthand. Suffering from sepsis, he was in excruciating pain on a hospital table when suddenly the pain ceased. He floated out of his body and his consciousness split into many pieces. Part of that consciousness was sent to a hell-like realm where suffering was everywhere. Dr. Rajiv saw a terrifying scene around him of souls in tormented agony. Just as he thought he would be lost there forever, he was taken by the hand and led through the pathways of hell back to life by a vague shadow. Dr. Rajiv believes that the shadow was his father, who could not bear to see his son torn apart by demonic forces. Number 2 is Anonymous. Some people are so frightened by their near-death experiences that they refuse to associate their names with the story, as though the very act of relaying what they encountered could somehow send them back there. In one anonymous account, an elderly man lay in a hospital and found that hell was brought directly to him. He saw flames rise up through the ground and consume his hospital room, and heard the wicked laughter of an unseen demon nearby. That pure evil was then joined by another terrifying sight. A ghostly face at the bottom of the hospital bed, peering up at him in agony and anger. When the old man was jolted back into his body, he was certain that he did not have much time left, so he contacted his estranged family in order to make peace before his passing. And number one is Jeremy Kagan. 
Though hell has been depicted in cinemas for over a century, filmmaker Jeremy Kagan was given a front row seat to watch it up close. After collapsing during a sweat lodge ritual, Jeremy felt as though his own body was no longer his own, as though something else had taken it from him. He then discovered that he was walking away from his own body. Soon, he was wandering through the nightmarish hallways, filled with unspeakable shapes and forms. He sensed these forms shifting shape around him, and they seemed to be made of a strange mist-like substance. Jeremy believed this was a very personal hell filled with suffocating experiences like no other. When he returned to life, he was utterly shaken by what he had seen. You see, some believe that the strange shapes shrouded by mist were cocoons, feeding on a human soul which was being drained from within. Thank you for subscribing, and a very special thanks to all of my channel members, especially the ones you can see on your screen right now. You all help keep my channel going. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.